Hi everyone. If you're getting started with Microwave Office, uh, hopefully what this little video will do for you is get you going on the right foot. What you see before you is a completely blank Microwave Office project. And I'm going to go File up here on the upper left, New with Library, Example Libraries, uh, and I'm going to use this uh, 4350 library. That's a Rogers Duroid 4350 library with uh, metal on one side and, of course, our circuit, our stub filter is going to be on the other. Now, uh, we need a circuit schematic. So over here on the left, right-click, New Schematic. I'll just go ahead and call this guy Stub. And there you are. We have a new schematic. We're simply going to make a simple one-pole stub filter. So we're going to have a transmission line with the stub hanging off the middle of it. So I need, first of all, a line. Well, there's our line. I added that quickly by uh, having a hotkey defined, where the MLIN, which is transmission line, uh, is inserted when I hit the letter M. Other ways to add elements. Uh, we need to add a T-junction. You can always come down here to the lower left and all the elements in the software are listed here. The trick is finding out where they live. Uh, another way to do it is if you're in the schematic is control L for lookup and you can start typing things like T and you can see that we have these uh, options for the T junction, I'm going to use this one MT dollar sign. And I hook him up. Green dot, green is good. If you don't get a green dot, you didn't hook it up properly. Other things you can do, we already have an M lens, so if I go Control C for copy and uh, Control V for paste, we go ahead and have a, another M lens there. And yet another way to work with elements, uh, we need to add that stub. So I can go Control V, paste. Now, of course, here I have an MLIN. And so what I'm going to do is change it to an MLEF. If you know the name of an element, you can actually change any element into any other. I'm going to right click here, rotate, and hook them up. And our circuit is ready, except for ports. Control P is the easiest way to add a port. So the network analyzer attaches there at 50 ohms. Control P, right click, right click, rotates it twice, and we add the second port. So this circuit is ready to go. It was that easy. Now, the next thing we need to do is frequencies. And if I come over here to project options, which is way up at the top of the project browser, and open that up, it is the most widely used menu in our software. We're going to go from 1 to 10 in steps of 0.1. And you can see that here on the left. So we're ready to go. Let's make a graph and see how it looks. So down here on the left, new graph. I'll just call it S. And what do you say we make a Smith chart? Um, looks a little nicer. So there's our Smith chart. Right click, add a new measurement. This is the measurement browser. We have about 250 measurements uh, in the software. If you don't happen to have the measurement you want, you can make your own using something called uh, output equations. Of course, we have S parameters. They're sitting right here. Up here on the right is your data source. Uh, this can be any schematic with ports, which for us will be stub. It uh, could be data you brought in from a network analyzer. How do you do that? Follow my cursor to the left over here, data files. If you right click, you could import the S parameters that way. We're going to go with S11. You can see we have 11 right here. Down here at the bottom, uh, these would be modifiers, for example, dB and magnitude. Uh, quite frankly, for a Smith chart, they don't make sense. Uh, they're grayed out. We're not going to let you do that. And we're ready to go. You can see the legend S11 working on schematic stub uh, is grayed out. We haven't simulated yet. And if I come up here to the little lightning bolt, analyze, we just simulated. And there we are. This is the stub from 1 to 10 gigahertz. Uh, if you want to, you can add markers. Uh, right click, add a marker. And you just simply snap on the trace. 
and the little blue, what we call drag handles, you can make the marker bigger. If you want to change stuff like um, colors and thicknesses of lines, etc., right click, options, uh, will go ahead and take you to all the graph options and you can go ahead and do that. Okay, so we've completed our measurements. Uh, at this point now we want to do some layout. So let's get this thing laid out so we can build it. Uh, this course is the schematic you're seeing before you. The way to get to the layout is on the left stub, view layout. And this is the layout, and I'm sure you agree this doesn't look much like a stub. And if I start moving this thing around, you can see it kind of looks like a stub, but we have these red lines. Uh, those are the connectivity lines in the schematic, showing how the elements are connected. We tend to call them rat lines at AWR, and if you have a mess of a circuit, you have a rat's nest. So how do we get it connected correctly? Well, first of all, I have to select all the elements, Control A for select all. Then I come up here, and there's this little icon with a red arrow that says snap together. And I snap it together, hit the home key, and there you are. You now have your circuit hooked up correctly, and it's ready to uh, go out to manufacturing. This is the 3D view, if you want to see it in 3D, and that's about it. A couple other things I want to show you on layout. Uh, if we go ahead and put the schematic and the layout side by side uh, like this, what we can do is, for example, if I select this left element, you'll notice that the schematic emling gets a green X through it. This just means that corresponds to the same element. The X is not a bad thing. Uh, it's just a way to show you where it is on the circuit. If I come back to the layout and double click the line, I get blue dots, those are called drag handles. And if I grab those, I can make the line wider. In the schematic, the width of the line got wider. And also what's interesting here is if we zoom in on the T-junction, notice the left side of the T-junction got wider automatically. And that's because the T-junction we're using is what we call smart layout T-junction. Uh, it's smart enough to look to its neighbors to get its layout. And this is a characteristic of these over here in the schematic, these dollar sign uh, elements where my cursor is. So it saves time, it saves error. I'm going to do my uh, control A again back in layout and hit the home key. And there you go, we're laid out. Hit the simulate button again so it updates uh, with the new layout because, of course, we changed the line width. So at this point, we could ship the circuit out, but I, what I want to do now is show you some EM. Very common to EM a circuit. Uh, you're worried about the model accuracy. Maybe it's a very wide line. Uh, maybe you don't have a model. Um, maybe you're worried about other lines being too close. Many reasons to do it. We support two types of EM simulators. Our planar simulator is called Axiom. It's for multi-layered circuits, chips, and modules with planar metal and vertical vias. If you're watching this video, probably about 90% of what you do is great with a planar simulator. Occasionally you need 3D, so you have bond wires, BGA balls, SMA connector. If you do, we have Analyst, our 3D EM simulator, which is a full finite element method. Both of them run from within our software. I'm going to, for this video, show you Axiom, the planar simulator, since this type of circuit is great for working with Axiom. Now, uh, I could just go ahead and uh, redraw this in EM or copy and paste the shapes from the layout. Let me show you a different way. I'm going to add this thing called an extraction block here. And what we're going to do is this extract block, we're going to tell it which shapes to send to EM. It'll automatically add the ports in the EM, simulate, get the S parameters, and bring them back into the circuit behind the scenes and update the graphs. So it's a very nice way to uh, quickly uh, see uh, what the EM results are. It saves time, you're, you're not redrawing things, and it saves error. So a lot of our customers like the extraction flow a lot. You don't have to use it, but it is convenient. Okay, let's set up this extract block now. So we have here the EM doc uh, that's going to be created, which is called EM Extract Doc. I'll leave it alone. 
The simulator is going to be Axiom. Notice it could be Analyst, the 3D simulator. We need a stack up block. And a stack up block, and I'm going to use this uh, single metal layer. A stack up block is uh, an object that tells the EM simulator what the layers are, what the materials are, boundary conditions, all that stuff EM needs to function. And in this library, a stack up block came in, which is why we can uh, uh, pick that. I now need to tell it which shapes to use. I'm holding down the shift key and we're going to select the four layout shapes. Right click on any one of them. Properties, these are the mutual properties of all the shapes. I'm going to enable the extract. And notice it says EM extract, which is the same as this name in this extract group. If I click the extract block, those elements turn red. Now this isn't bad, uh, this red is fine, it just means those are the elements that are selected. If we look at the layout, you can see in a similar way they're red. These are what are going to go uh, to EM. At this point, we actually could just run the software. It would automatically create the EM, run it, and update the graphs. Let me uh, show you the EM project it's going to create. Uh, I right click on the extract block, add extraction. And this is what it looks like. Uh, you'll notice there are two ports there. If I look at the 3D, it's, it's EM. Uh, you can see the layers. This is Axiom, two ports. Axiom is not in a box, so why do you see a box here? It's just a graphing artifact so we can show you the layers, which are at the edge of the box. Uh, otherwise, you couldn't see them. Analyst is in an enclosure of some kind. So no enclosure for Axiom. Analyst has an enclosure. Well, at this point, we're ready to run. And I hit the Simulate button. And uh, what it's done is Axiom is off and running. Uh, and this will take a few seconds. It is EM. Uh, but it is a fairly, of course, a, a very small project. So it should just take us a few seconds. It is finished. If I go to the Smith chart, this is now the results with the EM rather than the models. Uh, some of you may say, well, I'd like to see both of them at the same time. Uh, we can do that, certainly. Let me show you how to do it. There are fancier, more permanent ways to do this, but a real quick and dirty way is I go up to Graph, Freeze Traces, and you can see the trace grayed out. And then I go back to my circuit schematic, right-click, Toggle Enable. Now, I grayed out the extraction block. It's like I deleted it. So now uh, the software has to use models. We're back to the original thing. And if you look now, the gray, uh, faint grayed out trace is the EM. The blue trace now is with models, no extraction. And there are slight differences here. If I, for example, I zoom in, you can see the gray and the blue. So EM has made a difference. Uh, they're simple. Uh, the models aren't as accurate, perhaps, or we're, we're straining the 